Hello everyone, so for this video, which will be the last in the image information module, uh, we're going to take a look at uh, an image processing problem and try to uh, take a look at the kind of uh, thinking that we have to do in order to, to, uh, to find a way to, to solve it um, in an uh, acceptable way. Um, so the problem that we are going to be looking at is uh, the magic wand uh, from that you can find in tools such as uh, Photoshop or, or GIMP or most image uh, processing tools. Um, so if we uh, take a look here, at, so this is uh, GIMP, uh, at the magic wand tool, what does it do? Well, the basic idea of the magic wand is that if you uh, give the coordinates of a pixel, yeah, you, you do it by uh, clicking on it, uh, and you set a certain uh, threshold uh, of uh, tolerance for the difference between uh, two neighboring pixels, the, uh, the algorithm will um, do some region growing from the uh, pixel that you clicked on, it will uh, grow the, 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 the selected region until it finds pixels that are uh, no longer similar enough to the reference. And so if I click uh, in here, I can uh, have select pixels that are mostly in the uh, goat. Here I will get the pixels from the sky. Here I will get pixels mostly in the rock. And of course, depending on the, uh, on the threshold that I set, I will be more restricted uh, or less restricted on the pixel that I, uh, that I select. Um, so this is kind of the, the, the basic idea of the um, algorithm. So if we um, try to, to, to put that uh, into uh, more of an, um, I would say, of a pseudocode or at least an algorithmic uh, way of thinking, what um, do we actually need to, to do? So the, the, the two components that we have are that we have to find out if a pixel is similar enough to be included, similar enough to the reference to be included in the, um, in the final uh, selection. And we need to find out if a pixel um, can be, um, so if, if a pixel is close enough in terms of distance to the reference, and in this, in this uh, particular uh, tool, close enough means that we can get to that pixel um, through uh, neighbors, uh, through neighboring pixels, which are part of the, uh, of the selection. So this is the, um, the region growing part of the, of the algorithm, uh, which is starting from the uh, ref uh, reference point. We need to find the neighbors and then uh, extend the selection until we have no, we no longer, um, we can no, no longer add any uh, more similar enough pixels. Okay, so what we uh, expect to have would be to have a, a, um, a loop where we iterate over a list of candidate uh, neighbors. Um, we check if they are similar enough. And if they are similar enough, we add to selection to the selection and we add the neighbors, their neighbors to the list of candidates. Okay, so this is kind of the um, the thinking that uh, that, that we uh, we have for the algorithm. Uh, we probably have to to, to uh, to be a bit more um, uh, precise, uh, to precise a few things later on, and to see if there are other things that we need to think about. But this is kind of the uh, basic thinking that we that we can can have uh, before we we start actually looking at the um, at the problem. So here in the notebook, uh, at the moment I just have my um, my basic code for reading the, the the image. So I will take this image and I. We'll, uh, I've set up here, so instead of clicking and, and uh, setting uh, um, a threshold uh, with uh, a graphical interface, I will put it directly, uh, hard code it directly in the code. And I will take coordinates that are within the, uh, the goat here and set a tolerance 
that I've put here at 0 0.2, and we'll see uh, what we do with that uh, later. Um, so, what can I do? Well, the first thing and the easiest thing um, from what we've seen in the previous lab is the um, is the uh, similar enough to the reference part. Okay, because what that means is simply that the, the first kind of uh, selection that we do is simply based on a uh, threshold in the distance uh, color map. So if we get our distance map as the distance color in, in color space uh, that we previously seen in the, in the video, um, between every pixel in the image and our coordinates, we can quickly plot that and just before I forget I will have to cast this as a float to avoid uh, an overflow uh, with unsigned integer here I can show this distance map and so here I will have uh, yeah, the, 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 um, the distance in the color space between the pixel that is somewhere here in the goats and every other pixel of the image. So um, typically, uh, when we look in the in the tools like um, like GIMP orders, we see we can either have a threshold that are uh, like an absolute uh, va va value. Like um, here we compute distance. We can see that we have something between zero and for the most extreme case, uh, probably around 200 or something like that. Um, or we could, um, to be more general, uh, use a relative scale and first normalize the distance map by its uh, maximum. And then try to, so this should not change anything to the, to the look, but now you, we can see the value are between 0 and 1. And now we can say that uh, our tolerance, that's what our tolerance might mean, um, would be uh, a kind of a percentage of the maximum uh, distance that we can find within the image. So this is uh, a first threshold that we that we can adjust. We can try to to find something that um, that includes as much of the um, of the goat as possible, but without having uh, direct neighbors. Uh, that would um, that would go into the, um, the, the the rocks or the sky uh, here. So in this case, uh, we can see that if we use this threshold, uh, we will we will uh, flood uh, so we'll grow the region outside of the the goat here. Um, by how much it's a bit difficult to 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 to, to check uh, here, but we might be uh, getting into a slightly uh, too high thresh too high of a threshold something like this might be uh, a bit uh, a bit better so that's the kind of the easy part from what we've we've done uh, before now the um, the thing that we have to, to work on is the um, region growing part so we also want to limit this selection to um, to only two pixels that, that we can uh, get to from the reference by direct uh, neighbors okay so what do we need for that? Let's first create a method that returns um, the, uh, all the neighbors of, uh, of a pixel into a list. So it's neighbors. And I want uh, from a certain coordinate. And I will here define the neighbors as uh, with uh, the what's called for connectivity. So that's a choice that we always have uh, to, to make when we're talking about uh, neighborhoods in um, in an image. Is if we have uh, so a reference um, pixel here and all the, the pixels around it, we have we can have for connectivity where we only look at the pixels that are uh, direct neighbors in the x and y axis or we can look at uh, eight connectivity where we also take the uh, diagonals so here to make things a bit easier we'll just look at uh, four connectivity and i will define the, therefore the neighbors to be so let's make things a bit more clear i will put y is the y coordinates of my reference x and the neighbors will be y minus 1 x 
y plus 1, x, y, x minus 1, and y, x plus 1. So these are the four neighbors of any given uh, pixels, pixel. So what can I do uh, from that? Well, let's first initialize. So my list of uh, candidates will be first the neighbors of my uh, reference. Okay. I know what I want to do is I want to iterate for as long as I have candidates in the list. So why the length of the candidates list is uh, over zero. What do I want to do? I want to look at the next candidate. So I can, uh, I know that I will want to look at the, at the next candidate and remove that candidate from the list. So I could uh, do it by uh, doing something like uh, uh, taking uh, coordinates equal the first item and then changing uh, the um, uh, rewriting the, the list of coordinates by removing this one or do even doing something like uh, remove uh, index zero or something like that. But I can actually do that in one line by using the pop method. Uh, so in a, in a Python list, if I do a pop of zero, this will remove the first item from the list and returning it into the, the variable here that I, uh, that I created. So now I will uh, get the first uh, candidate. And uh, the next step is that I will uh, have to check now, let's put that as a comment right now, if it's a valid uh, candidate. And then I will want to uh, add, if it's a valid candidate, to add the, um, the its own neighbors to the list. Okay. So let's first check um, this part just to make sure that uh, that we have something uh, that uh, that works so here i can see that uh, what i'm doing i'm taking the first uh, coordinate here um, and creating the list of neighbors and i will go through the four neighbors that i have uh, that i found and uh, just print them uh, here so that part seems to work so what would a valid candidate be? Well, a valid candidate is uh, a pixel where the, um, the distance in the distance map, or the value in the distance map, is lower than our the tolerance that we uh, that we uh, define. Um, so we can actually compute that directly as a tolerance mask which will be uh, every pixel where our distance map is lower than our tolerance. I can use that to, to show it here, to not compute it twice. So this will be a very fast computation. That's why I, I want to, to make that directly uh, on every pixel of the, of the ima image rather than computing it uh, pixel by pixel here. It's because here I can do it with NumPy and so it will be go very fast to just compute it for every pixel on the on the image, and therefore when when I will go through the image here here, it will uh, the, the computation will already be be, be be done, and it will actually be faster than to try to uh, to redo it uh, every time. So check if it's a valid candidate. Uh, will be mask tolerance of the current coordinates. So if this is equal to so if this evaluates to uh, true then that means that we can uh, add the um, the neighbors to, to, to the list so that would mean uh, new candidates would be the neighbors of the coordinate that we are trying to check and then we need to add those new candidates to the uh, list. And that I can do by, uh, so with the plus, uh, the plus operation for, for lists in Python. If I do that quickly here. Uh, so if I have one list, which is one, two, three, and another list that is four, five, 
A plus B will be the concatenation of uh, both lists. Okay, so this would be um, the concatenation of our old candidate list and our new uh, candidate lists. And then I will um, I, I, this this will uh, iterate to the next one. So. What uh, am I missing uh, right now? First of all, I'm missing the uh, putting the result actually somewhere. So I need to create a mask with my results. Put that here, mask with my results. And first, I will initialize it with zero everywhere. And the shape should be uh, actually here the shape, the same shape as, as my um, distance map or the mask tolerance, by the way. Um, and I will set up first. Well, the pixels, the, the my reference pixel must be part of the um, of the result, so I will set it as true. And the same here, if uh, the candidate that I'm looking at is valid, then I will uh, add it to the uh, uh, results. At some point, I will want to, to check that. Um, so, if I run this code, uh, what is going to happen? Well, it's probably going to be uh, running for a long time, and I will interrupt it immediately um, because uh, right now I, I have um, a few a few problems, uh, and the first one is that um, I'm. I, I will here uh, keep adding candidates that I've already uh, already uh, been through. So um, if I look, let let me uh, quickly illustrate that by uh, um, making some uh, early stopping. So if I set up a counter here at zero, and I print the coordinates and I. One, so let me uh, go through a few uh, a few value, and uh, what I should see. Yeah, so as you can as, as you can see, it goes through the the first four um, the first four val uh, neighbors that that I had. Then it finds uh, the next one, uh, which is the neighbor a neighbor from from this one, but then the next neighbor from the first one. Is a pixel that we've um, that we have uh, so not this one, but the, the, the yeah. Sorry. Uh, so since we are taking the the pixel, uh, so for instance, to the to, to the left, and we are when we are looking at the neighbors from the pixel to the left, we we'll also get to the pixel to its right directly, which is a pixel that we've already visited, and so we are actually looping back to pixels that we've already visited and so we are having uh, an infinite uh, an infinite loop at the moment so that's not good so how do we uh, solve that well we can what we can do is check um, well there are two things that we want to what you want to check we want to check that it's a pixel that we have not uh, visited yet and we want to check that it's a pixel that's not already in the list of candidates that we are going to to visit uh, later so let's um, do that. I will have a list that we call visited. And uh, whenever I pop a candidate from the list, I will append it to the list of visited. And now here, what I will do is for each of the new uh, candidates, candidate in candidate, I will check that it is not in the uh, in the already in the list of candidates, and that. It is not in the list of visited, and only then will I add it to uh, to the list. Okay, so if we do that, will will I have something that works? And actually, yes, I have something that works. Um, so if I do that, I um, 
I will make sure that I uh, only visit uh, every pixel once, and so I get my uh, my expected result here, which is uh, already uh, fairly uh, fairly good with the threshold that we that we found. So if I adjust the threshold here, uh, I can get uh, a result that may be a lot more uh, restricted, or I can get something that will be a lot uh, larger. If I take a very large value here, it will probably uh, break at some point. Um, so there are two, pr two problems that I'm going to have here. The first one is that it will take a very, very long time uh, just because the, the, the algorithm such as we've written it, I've written it here is uh, absolutely not uh, optimized in, uh, any, uh, in any way. So I've tried to, to do it in a way that is relatively clear to, to, to read, but it's clearly not uh, the, the, the an, an optimized way of, of doing this. Um, and the second problem that we uh, might eventually get if it uh, if it does not break uh, um, if it manages to get to, to get to that in the computation is that at no point right now are we checking that the um, that the point that we are looking at is actually inside of the image. So at some point we will get to the border of the image and we will uh, get an index out of bound uh, error. So let me interrupt that and just. Um, add this, this check here. Uh, actually, I will, uh, well, where will I put it? Yeah, here, sh here should be OK. Um, so what, what other uh, check should I have? Well, I need that the candidate, every coordinate of the candidate should be uh, inside the image. And inside the image means that the uh, coordinates are between zero and the shape uh, of the image uh, along that axis. Let's so say now for one. In shape, sorry, in that shape. So to, to have a look at, um, at the result here, so first let's check that I have not broken anything. 25, okay, this seems to still uh, work. Um, and let's try to take now, um, first to, to um, reduce, I'm going to take that here, um, to reduce a bit the size of the uh, image, I'm going to uh, only take to subsample the image by a factor of five in both uh, dimensions to make it a bit uh, quicker. And um, so first to, uh, to check, let me take the same coordinates, but so I will have to divide them by uh, five. So that will be 90 and that will be 116 and using the same tolerance. So this is the same image, but now very pixelated. And now let's take a pixel that's somewhere in the sky. So 20, uh, let's say 20 and 100. And have a look at what's happening. So this may still take a while, even with the subsampled. There we go. And so here we have uh, all of the pixels in the uh, in the sky. Um, so another way that we can look at the results um, a bit better, maybe, is that uh, to apply the mask uh, to the um, to the original image. So let's take our uh, make a copy of the image. What I can do is say that anywhere that the um, Results mask, sorry, is uh, false. We set the original image to zero, and in that way, we can uh, display the image with only. So instead of uh, putting this binary mask, we can choose to just display the uh, pixels that. Uh, that have been uh, selected and put everything else in uh, in black. Um, so let me do that again for the uh, for the the, the, the goats. Uh, I think it was thirty five that gave the best results. 
so this is the result here and if I do the mask here I will get uh, I will see that, uh, that I can select mostly the um, the goats so let's do that quickly for the full scale image to see it a bit better uh, and it was what was it uh, five times that 450 and 580 was it like that this will take a bit longer but now I have uh, goats and I can see that it works relatively well uh, I do have a few holes in it um, but for uh, just a quick uh, relatively quick uh, algorithm to program that's uh, pretty good so in in a later module in the image segmentation module we'll see um, some better ways of a bit um, automating this whole process of finding good thresholds and uh, and doing this uh, region growing stuff uh, and so on um, but this is just here, just using the, the, the basic um, techniques that, we, that, we, that we've seen uh, in previous videos for manipulating the, the image information. We can already develop some relatively advanced um, image processing tools uh, that can be uh, fairly useful in any uh, image processing uh, software. So that's it for this video and for this module. And uh, next, we'll start looking at uh, image filtering, so how we can uh, transform uh, our image um, to, uh, to perform different uh, image processing uh, tasks. So that's it for now, and I will see you in the next video.